Hello, and welcome to Patents Leaders and Learning and Literacy. My name is Dr. Pam Kastner, and I have the honor of serving as Patents State Lead for Literacy. Joining me in the webcast today is Ernesto Ortiz from the McDonald Elementary School, Centennial School District. Welcome, Ernesto. Thank you for having me. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. Uh, we're very excited to have you here. Uh, you are a principal school leader, and you've really al uh, also been venturing into some blogging recently. Mm -hmm. You're a doctoral student. Um, yes. You are fully invested in the science of reading, so we really wanted yeah. to have the opportunity to talk to you about how you're leading literacy in your school. Mm -hmm. So um, what can you tell our uh, viewers a little bit more about yourself? Well, I am a principal of a K-5 building. I am entering I'm in the middle of my third year, okay. uh, my 19th year of education. And it wasn't until uh, my, the start of my 18th year where I came across Emily Hanford's uh, work in terms of um, the science of reading, mm -hmm. where I really had my aha awakening moment with the reading research and the literacy movement that's happening. And at that point, I immersed myself in the science of reading, not to be a victim of the moment, really wanted to understand it a little bit more before I brought it to my building. And at the start of this school year, the conversations started happening in terms of what we were doing with our literacy practices in the classroom and how can we maximize that for all the boys and girls. Mm -hmm. So t can you give us a little bit of background about your teaching career before you became a principal and yeah. what made you want to be a principal? So I was an elementary, uh, K-5 to five teacher for 13 years. Mm -hmm. I taught a variety of grades, kindergarten through fifth, in the Allentown School District, and was an assistant principal in, for three years in the Allentown School District. And prior to becoming an assistant, I just enjoyed being in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Had and my still do. I still, still <laughs> love mm -hmm. being in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Had my first master's in ESL, mm -hmm. being the, from the Allentown area, understanding that that would help me be a better classroom teacher. Mm -hmm. Uh, given the the amount of English language learners that were in the Allentown yes. area and then at the end of my 12th year decided to become uh, pursue my administrative degree mm -hmm. and then through a cohort that uh, had an accelerated program with the Lehigh University and Allentown partnership I was able to get that completed in, a, in about 14 months Wow! yeah uh -huh. and so three years later uh, after serving as an assistant principal was ready to ascend to the principalship mm -hmm. and you know, when I reflect back uh, onto when I started, I wish I knew uh, then what I know now in terms of a lot of things, but specifically literacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said Emily Hanford's uh, podcast. They yeah. have certainly mm -hmm. set the world. On, they have set the world on fire. They yeah. have brought the conversation around the science of reading from basically uh, in an internal discussion around researchers and practitioners to like just uh, the people on the street. They're talking about um, what are the best practices for teaching reading, why do teachers not, do not know this. Mm -hmm. So when um, you were teaching, did I didn't know this. So uh, did you know this when you were teaching? And so I know Emily Hamford was a catalyst, but when you were teaching, did you even have an inkling of any of this or not. I, I Not didn't. at all. Okay. No. So when I was listening to Emily's work and reading her work uh -huh. as well, yes. I said to myself, that's how I taught. I taught, especially, I could specifically think of third grade readers and we're reading our leveled readers. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's like, that's okay. You're, you're making the mistake that good readers make. Let's rely on pictures. Let's look at the letter. Why don't we skip this word, move on, and then see if we can figure out that word based yeah. off of the rest of the sentence. Mm -hmm. And I, that's how I taught. Mm -hmm. I didn't, how, yeah, that's how I didn't I know any you. better. Mm -hmm. And so something that I like to tell uh, my, my teachers and anyone who listens is, back then I felt like I was more influenced than informed. Oh, I like that. Because yeah. I was influenced by the people who I saw had a level of authority in terms of uh, position, in terms of titles, uh, whether they had their doctorate or not, and right. were, uh, considered someone some level of authority in reading mm -hmm. and so when you're influenced by that you think that to be true now that I'm a doctoral student I refuse to have someone influence me I want to be informed mm -hmm. and I want to be the one who can read research determine whether it's valid or viable or it's even credible mm -hmm. and then make my own informed decisions and that's what I'm hoping to be able to do for my teachers that they can take a step back look at a program look at an approach mm -hmm. with a critical eye and say based off what I know I find this to be 
a benefit or maybe not so much because it's lacking this. And we're doing that even with some of the programs that we have available and mm -hmm. saying, okay, I might have thought this before about program X, but now that I know better, I right. see that there are some deficiencies here or gaps mm -hmm. that perhaps I can fill or maybe supplement in some other capacity or maybe we just have to replace altogether. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we always hear with the Reading League and, uh, and many others too, uh, same with the dyslexia pilot in Pennsylvania, we always said when you know better, you do, do better. better. Yes. And so, and it's a no shame zone, you know. Correct. Um, uh, so, so how? I guess it's a big, ch it's a big change. It's like a yeah. 360. So uh, usually, so I commend you. Uh, usually, it's teachers um, mm -hmm. that sh are start shifting and usually go to principals and say, mm -hmm. you, "Please read this," or "Did you listen to that?" Um, so. Uh, tell me, I guess, because uh, I, I think back to when I was a teacher, and if you'd come in like, hey, you know, science of reading, mm -hmm. um, how, I mean, um, what's the best way, or, uh, you know, you're changing a culture and a community, yeah. and you're shifting practices, that's always a little bit unsettling, but, um, like, how are you supporting your teachers, and uh, I know that you're creating a community of learners who mm -hmm. can be very discernible, who are basing that on empirical evidence, but, you know, those things don't ha happen overnight, and so, I guess, for school leaders, principals out there, mm -hmm. they may have listened to Emily too, and they're thinking, wow, I, this is a catalyst as well, but I don't know how to transition from, I'm kind mm -hmm. of on fire and I've been reading a lot, I know more, but what's my next step? I, mm -hmm. I know one thing you've been doing is you, you've been blogging. I know I you're very, um, uh, you're on social media quite a bit, mm -hmm. you tweet a lot, and that's a great way to, to reach out to. Your blogs have been very well regarded and shared. Thank you. Um, but uh, I guess advice maybe? I mean, mm -hmm. I know your journey is particular to you, but mm -hmm. you know, there's principals out there that want to do you know, what you're doing and emulate uh, what you're doing. So what, would you, what advice would you give them? Well, it always starts with relationships it does. and that yeah. trust and rapport that you have with your faculty and staff. Mm -hmm. if now I, one thing I see you do, mm -hmm. I, I've seen on social media, and we're coming out to visit you, but you're actually in classrooms, you know, yes. I'm teaching yep. and, you yep. know, I did have a principal uh, in my career, just one, but he could jump in and he could teach anything that I was teaching mm -hmm. and he'd be like, hey, I'm coming in to see the kids and he would just sit down and start teaching yep. a lesson and I, I so admired that um, because he could walk the walk and talk the talk. Mm -hmm. He could do both, and so that's what I really see you doing. So I'm sure that has a lot of value for the teachers too. You know, we try, you know, <laughs> and I say we because my assistant as well is just as present in the classrooms as I am. And, and what's so his name or her his name? His name is Mike Van Buren. Okay. Yeah, and no so <laughs> you know we want to be as present as possible. Mm -hmm. But any any that's administrator, not always easy. it is not. It's not. Right. Any administrator will tell you that that's that's a challenge at times, mm -hmm. right? To be as present as you would like to be in the classrooms, but that rapport and that trust that you build with teachers is so huge, if, especially when you're implementing change. Mm -hmm. And this is not only a change in practices, but this is a change for identity for some of my teachers because it is. It's a warning. <laughs> their entire career, they have spent teaching in a, in a, in a capacity that really aligns with 3 queuing, MSV, level text. And when you bring about this research, this, this literature, this evidence base, right, mm -hmm. that suggests that what you've been doing perhaps has not been the best way to go about teaching reading, mm -hmm. you're, you're clashing with someone's identity. Mm -hmm. So for any administrator, any building leader that wants to start implementing this, you have to take an approach that's going to be um, safe, Mm -hmm. um, no shame, no right. blame, and that's where the level of trust and relationship helps with that. If I would have started doing this my first year, I don't believe I would be as successful as I am with my faculty. Mm -hmm. And I, I talked to my wife about this a lot, who's also a Kinder teacher. Yes, kindergarten, yeah, kindergarten teacher. Kindergarten teacher. <laughs> who, my favorite grade, as a matter yeah, of fact. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I love kindergarten. Uh, so who has also embraced the, the, the science of reading. You go about this in a way that is safe, incremental changes, what can we change? We've identified uh, practices that we can implement now mm -hmm. that would have impact. We've also looked at, and I have aligned, budget yep. um, s uh, support resources, people to help support with professional development. We've leveraged our, uh, we have a, a number of ways that we do professional development, faculty meetings. We have professional days, uh, with recess time that's mm -hmm. uh, given to, um, us as for, for professional growth. We have also some times after school and we're aligning all of that. So resources, professional development with what we want to, where we want to be. Mm -hmm. What does that look like in like kindergarten? 
first grade, second grade, getting our teachers in the upper grades prepared for what they're going to be receiving because right. I currently have second graders who can uh, manipulate a word and identify the, the syllables open, closed, why is the I, for example, in library, a long right, I when right. there's no vowel team, mm -hmm. there's no magic E, there's nothing there, but the fact that you know that it's an open syllable. Mm -hmm. You're teaching them language. Right, right. and the so it's a, it's, a, it's a matter of word study, but then also transferring that understanding and, and showing us that they can put that into new learning. And we've mm -hmm. spoken about, and uh, David shares self-teaching teaching hypothesis, hypothesis, so mm -hmm. it's like if you have this, uh, this level of understanding with the word study, then the boys and girls will start teaching themselves these the words. the volume of reading, right. Yeah, because and so they can read. We, we, having that understanding helps the teachers, I believe, uh, guide their practice so that that can happen. Mm -hmm. Because I, I love the, the um, David Kilpatrick's Essential Books, and I, 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 bought, I bought that for all my teachers. I know, I saw that last year. Because I yeah. believe every teacher should have mm -hmm. that book, read that book, go through that book. And he talks about, David Kilpatrick does about how, as teachers, educators, we teach kids three to 10,000 words and then they learn the other. Where did they learn the other 30,000? 20 to 40, <laughs> right, <laughs> thousand. Right. We didn't teach them. No, That's we didn't. Right. And so, how does that happen? Mm -hmm. And having that level of understanding, I wish I had that when mm -hmm. I taught because I would, have, I would have done things differently as a teacher. Right. So now my responsibility is to affect change, systematic change, K to five, and I really do believe that starting at the K to two level I is what's going to help us moving forward. And so I've been blessed to have leadership in the, in the Centennial School District who is allowing me to bring this level of research into the building, take risks, and, and really alter mm -hmm. what we've been doing for many years. Mm -hmm. So I know the, the biggest change usually for teachers is not necessarily around the language comprehension, um, you know, read alouds, maybe oral language and understanding mm -hmm. how critical that is to the foundation of all literacy. But, um, you know, reading a story, asking about beginning, middle, end, the story grammar, things like that, that usually isn't um, an entry point that's too challenging for teachers. But for me, I'll speak for myself, um, learning about how kids learn to read words mm -hmm. accurately and automatically mm -hmm. um, was the biggest aha for me, uh, understanding yeah. the speech sounds of our language, the phonemes of our language. Um, that was the biggest, biggest shift because to get to David Scherer's self-teaching hypothesis, kids have to have that code accurately and automatically yeah. because it's based on volume of reading. So I guess, um, how did you help teachers shift? Mm -hmm. uh, because most curricula and most schools are, they're doing phonemic awareness and they're doing phonics. Mm -hmm. They're aware of the big five of reading. But typically, I always say it's like salt and pepper mm -hmm. or ketchup and mustard. It's like a a condiment at best, but in those early grades, when we're building that foundation, we really need to have an emphasis. You know, of course, we're never forgetting about oral language, mm -hmm. but most of that's coming from the teacher, uh, their oral language, the oral language they expect of students, and the read alouds that they're selecting. But there's a heavy emphasis, or should be, on around phonemic awareness and phonics, mm -hmm. and that's that's new to teachers. They've done it, but it's kind of like, okay, I might have done, let's say. Uh, say baseball and I'll say baseball don't, but don't say base and the kids say ball but that's where they stop. So you know referencing mm -hmm. back to Dave Kilpatrick we know that we need to be moving kids from phonemic awareness to phonemic proficiency mm -hmm. where they are so aware of the phonemes or unaware that they mm -hmm. are unconsciously skilled they're proficient. So that's a big sh that's a big shift for teachers yeah. um, and so um, you know really focusing on that K to two how did you help them? I know you're in there doing the lessons with them but yeah. um, how did you help them make that shift? And what are you seeing as a result of that for so, kids? So at my building, what we're working on is that word level proficiency, but then what helps lead to that? And it's really that phonemic proficiency. And that's, those are the conversation, that subject right there is what we've been really focusing on mm -hmm. in terms of are these boys and girls having a word level proficiency? And if not, then let's see why. Is it phonemic proficiency that's lacking? Mm -hmm. Okay, if that it, then let's go backwards. And so my teachers, kudos to them because mm -hmm. they're so eager to mm -hmm. learn more, mm -hmm. to try, to, to take risks, have feedback, mm -hmm. Let, what, what can I do to improve? And I, I really do believe I'm blessed at my building to have teachers who are embracing this, embracing this mindset, because mm -hmm. it really, it's a paradigm shift to what they It they've, is a big shift. I said that the seven stages to. of the grief <laughs> that and you so go through. And so we have this understanding that with deletion, substitution of the phonemes, manipulation, mm -hmm. how that correlates to future reading success. Mm -hmm. What does that look like in terms of not simply saying card, 
now say card without d right. car right. but also one of the things that we spoke about is like when you say roast now say roast without s and it's rote but mm -hmm. it's not mapped the way you would see rote so that right Correct. there having that level of understanding and thinking oh they had to really attune to the sound and analyze i think the big difference is because uh, earlier you said like um and same for me kids would look at the first letter and guess and i didn't really yeah. think there was anything wrong, wrong with, that. with that yeah sure um and so i mean we know we need the kids to analyze to the entire word because mm -hmm. they're mapping that phonemic sequence to those letters and letter patterns to those graphemes and they have to do that yep. all the way through the word so that's such a big such a big shift for teachers. The great thing I think about phonemic awareness is it's malleable. So if kids mm -hmm. are having problems with it, it can yeah. be taught. It can yep. be taught within a relatively short amount of time every single day if it's done directly and explicitly. And the kids, for the most, they see it as fun. They don't. They do. <laughs> they just they think, see okay. it as wordplay. A lot of the That's schools that I'm working it. with, um, you know, the kids are. And this is honestly God truth. They're out on the playground, you know, doing phonemic awareness mm -hmm. activities. A teacher a couple of weeks ago, it was indoor recess. And a student was had a little group in front of her, and she was doing uh, a little lesson in phonemic sure. awareness. So you know that's that's really exciting. But okay, so we've got the phonemic awareness down. Now. So now, how do we shift into mapping uh, sound and print? Mm -hmm. And then the big thing we talked about earlier is like, okay, so then what kind of text? So you talked about mm -hmm. how materials have changed, and so how have materials changed in in your classrooms with your teachers? Yeah. How do they transition from mapping sound to print, so that kids are reading in connected text, so they can you know build that sight word vocabulary from David Shear's you know self teaching yep. hypothesis? So two areas there we we talked about, and at my building we spoke about word identification to word recognition. recognition. Yes. That's where the mapping came mm -hmm. into play. Right? Yeah. And we are, we're still having those ongoing conversations. Orthographic mapping is a lot to put oh, your head around. Yeah, <laughs> and so that's that's a huge uh, conversation piece that has been ongoing. Professional learning will be continuing with that. Mm -hmm. But we have spoken about, especially that second grade boom of vocabulary, yes. that's typically the age range. How can we support that so that actually happens mm -hmm. on time and then it when the third grade teachers get our incoming third graders are like, whoa, wow, wow right? <laughs> yes. And so we've spoken about how we go from word identification to word recognition, orthographic mapping, mm -hmm. mapping the phonemes to the graphemes, graphemes. And, and really being explicit in terms of, okay, you might, yes, the English language might be unique, but when you understand that there's 50% of the words that are decodable, another percent, a large percent yeah, that are only irregular with tiny one, bit. Mm -hmm. one exception, and then when you add morphology and then um, where the words come from, their right. origins. English can be very predictable. Right, so English when you understand language. that structure of, yep. of language, yeah, so and, you know, we we have, we're not taught that. We have been more aware of that word identification to word, word recognition. recognition. So that was the one piece. And in terms of resources in the classroom, mm -hmm. we still have level text. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not of the mindset to, to completely get rid of them. Mm -hmm. If a child is, my biggest question to teachers is, what does the child do when they get to an unfamiliar word? Right. What is their go-to right. strategy? Mm -hmm. If they sound it out, the code, mm -hmm. then I, I, I'm They're fine with right them direction. using leveled readers right. because they'll. That's what they won't rely on the pictures mm -hmm. and, and other cues to, to figure out that word. But we have made a made it a, a, a point to purchase quality decodable readers. Mm -hmm. And kudos to my home and school because they were. I made a plea, uh -huh. and they were able to support us with purchasing. We purchased geodes. Oh, they're beautiful. And yes. they're wonderful they books. Are. Do you and have foundations? We do have oh, foundations. Okay, so they yep. nicely align. Yes. So we have foundations, mm -hmm. and so we we didn't have that K to two, but we made it a point again aligning funding mm -hmm. at the building level mm -hmm. to support purchases of letter boards, letter tiles, manuals, yeah. updated manuals, and so with that we wanted to have some decodables that align Absolutely. with that. So yeah. we, my home and school was able to God bless them. Yeah. Um, provide us with some funds to do that. So as a building leader, we had to be creative because right. we don't have unlimited budgets, right? right. We have That's budgets true. that we can use uh, that are finite, but then mm -hmm. you have to get creative grants, home yes. and schools, if you're mm -hmm. fortunate to have a home and school or a parent teacher organization right. yes. that will help yes. support that. Um, align yourself with organizations the Centennial School District is we're currently working with the Ames Institute. Yes, yes. Ames Academy to help is a wonderful place. Build uh, the teacher's repertoire mm -hmm. in terms of how to uh, effectively use the evidence base in the classroom. Right. So they're because doing the proficiency. Yes. Yes. That's yes. that's the biggest thing. So you have this love this research body of research and the evidence. How does that translate, translate. into the classroom? Yeah. And I truly believe that the Aim Institute, the Pathways to Proficiency, will be that bridge for it that. It is that bridge. So. 
uh, word identification to word recognition, aligning funds to purchase quality resources mm -hmm. have been a big thing at the McDonald uh, Elementary School and Centennial School District this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the decodables I think are especially important. Yes. Uh, just because uh, the kids need to be reading text to get lots of practice with those uh, skills that they're mm -hmm. learning in isolation. Yeah. Right? And so, yeah, definitely a, a place and time for um, authentic texts when kids are mm -hmm. into that later alphabetic phase or yeah. heading toward that consolidated phase with ARI, So. And I'm just super proud as well for our, our, our teachers who work with students of uh, English language learners, mm -hmm. students with the, an IEP, special education, because we're using the same things that are being right. used in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Foundation, yes, consistency. integrity. Right. And it's not, if you're an ESL, you're going to be doing something different. Right. If you have an yes. IEP, you're doing something different. Right. No. That's such a big misconception, I think, that people think that kids need different things. They yeah. all need direct, explicit instruction. You know, if they're um, having um, some challenges, they may, they may need uh, more dosage, they mm -hmm. may need more intensity, maybe a smaller group, you know, thinking of MTSS, but it's not fundamentally different. And so it's, it's, not. it's so interesting. And that's that, another that's thing that's, misconception. that's different at McDonald too, because before we would have students who weren't ready for leveled readers just being given leveled go. readers, mm -hmm. we're going to rely on their knowledge of sight words and then we're going to cue them based off of the, the cueing mm -hmm. system. Right. Now we are, okay, they might need some more phonemic practice mm -hmm. with some phonics. Maybe this group needs some more segmenting and blending practice. Right. Maybe so this group is ready is, to read. Because um, we were talking earlier, you know, what does it mean if you're a level G? Yeah. Uh, but what does it mean if I've done a diagnostic and I know where your skill strengths and needs are and Correct. I'm grouping you very in a targeted way to kind of fill those gaps, mm -hmm. right? Such a big difference in terms of helping kids progress. So what are you seeing, what kind of results are you seeing from the kids and mm -hmm. uh, what are your teachers saying? I know what they're saying on Twitter yeah, and uh, yeah. social media, they love working for you, they love working at the school. Well, I, I, uh, I think so. it's the other way around. <laughs> I, I'm it's the fortunate, I, it I is reciprocal. Because okay. I, I am blessed to be there. Mm -hmm. and I think they I, feel the same way. I, so I say this to anyone who's willing to listen, I really believe this was meant to be. Uh -huh. um, McDonald, myself, I take great pride in living in the community. Right, you said the triple. Yeah, know. triple invested. Triple invested. Uh, we live there. Uh, close my, by, very close. We work there and <laughs> our kids go to mm -hmm. McDonald and the Centennial School District. And right. I truly believe the community sees that level of investment mm -hmm. as something that I, I'm not just here and I, I leave McDonald and I go home somewhere right. else. Like I, right. walk, I walk to my house <laughs> when it's nice out. And yes. so, you know, that triple investment they, they, they see the dedication, the passion mm -hmm. that we all have at this building, because I'm mm -hmm. not the only triple invested person there. Right. But I believe that we have such a synergy at McDonald right now mm -hmm. that where we're heading mm -hmm. is very exciting. It is very exciting. We have a bunch of teachers who are eager and willing to, 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 to want to know better so they can do, do better. better. And it's mm -hmm. not that they weren't doing you know, they better were, or weren't doing yes. well before, yeah. but when you are informed instead of influence, like we were talking right. off yes. of there before, that's when you're like, I want to do better for these boys right. and girls and, and for this school right. and this community. Right. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a, a, a virtuous cycle. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so building, building, building. All right. So where do you see yourself in like, all right, so you're fully vested yeah. and, you know, it's, uh, but mm -hmm. where do you see, where do you see things like in five years? Where would you love to see McDonald Elementary? So in five years, I still see myself at McDonald. Uh -huh. uh, my youngest son's in second grade. Uh -huh. and at so your school. At, my, my, at <laughs> McDonald, yep. yep. And so what I see him and his growth and development, it, it makes me so happy and proud. Mm -hmm. uh, quick side story, he went to patient first and uh -huh. he was a little sick the other day. And my wife is texting me and asking uh, me, my son's Nicholas, he wants to know why the T-I makes the sh sound impatient. And the fact that he attunes to that wow. is very, I am, I want all the boys yes. and girls to yeah. be that inquisitive and- Right, they, word conscious. You know, yes. why is yes. that? So interested I in know language. S-H makes sh, right. but he was able, and my, I asked my wife, I said, did he figure that out on his own? <laughs> that, that it's the T-I? Right. That that graphing yeah. makes uh -huh. the sh sound? And she said, yeah, because oh he understands God. open, close syllables. Right, right. So he knew pay. Pay was open. Is open. Yes. And that I see in five years, McDonald Elementary School and the entire Centennial School mm -hmm. District, given where, what we're doing with writing, yeah. reading, the math. Professional learning. Professional learning for all teachers, administrators as well, Materials, leaders. Materials, resources, yeah. Aligning. Yes. I really see, what I see for us is that we are 
and I tell this to my staff, I tell this to the parents of McDonald. We just had a home and school meeting this past week. Uh -huh. We are setting the trend I in Bucks County. Mm -hmm. We are setting a trend where people are going to notice what we're doing, people outside of our right. district, and say, what are they doing there at Centennial? Right. What are they right. doing at McDonald Elementary School? And we have two other great elementary schools right. as yes. well. Yes. Um, but well, let's go see what they're doing. Mm -hmm. and, we already have a level of that now, mm -hmm. where people are seeing Starting. what we're doing yes. and, and, I know, and asking questions. I've been questions. referring principals to you too. <laughs> and so in five years, what I see is our, all of our literacy effort bearing fruit. Mm -hmm. and because it takes time. It does take it does time. Take time. Yes. But when you have a level of investment from up top down right. to the classroom, and, um, and you're that's going to with help. It. That's yep. the thing. Um, sustained leadership is so essential uh, mm -hmm. because oftentimes we will see um, a transformative leader come in and really uh, make a difference, but that leadership doesn't sustain. And so yeah. then, um, I think what you're what you're saying too is you're having everyone invested. Yep. So it's not, of course, you're leading that as you should as a principal, but um, you're building leaders within your school so yeah. that you're all part of that process, not just one transformative person. Well, principal. I will say I am blessed to have a bunch of great teachers, mm -hmm. and then I have. A lot of informal leaders who help facilitate this change mm -hmm. right and so one of the best things that any leader can say is that if I were to stop being at this building tomorrow right. Right. I truly believe McDonald will continue with this because of the dedication the passion of the teachers mm -hmm. and their level of understanding and thirst of right, for want more. More, for more more knowledge mm -hmm. to improve their their practice yeah, that's a legacy and yes. I, I really believe it would continue mm -hmm. if Mike and I were to stop being the the building leaders there I truly believe whoever came in would have to really really suppress that drive to want to do right. more I, I believe that's what was what's what's happening at McDonald mm -hmm. I'm is. so super excited which is why I felt the need to start blogging about it yes. because I have so much passion so tell people the two titles of your blogs and where yeah they, where they can follow you on social media mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. so that because I'm sure after people watch this if they don't know you already they're gonna want to follow you so so I you can follow me on Twitter mr. E Ortiz jr. jr. <laughs> Hopefully in three years it'll be Dr. E. Ortiz <laughs> yeah, Jr. So tell but me about your doctoral thesis. What do you? Uh, is it literacy related? It, I, it I will be. Okay. It will be. I'm, I'm in year one. Okay. And so um, uh -huh. I transferred in from Lehigh University okay. to Delaware Valley University, mm -hmm. a lot closer to home. You got to think of time, yes. you know, uh -huh. away family. from family. Yep. <laughs> yep. And so I've had some great mentors and my assistant superintendent and superintendent have been really great in telling me like you need a good balance. Yes, because it's hard to have balance in a yeah. doctorate. <laughs> right. So. And so they, they were like, you know, Delaware Valley, right. good college, right. relatively close, so you're right. not going to be um, spending too much time just traveling, right? Correct, yes. And so yeah. with that, it will be something literacy-based. I, I have a lot of ideas. That, yes. um, I'm really interested it's interesting in... Interesting in leadership, too. Yep. Yeah, yes, I'm really uh, interested in doing something with what we're doing with AIM, perhaps mm -hmm. some level of a case study, oh, to see yeah. how that... Uh, yes, and AIM is such a place fruit. of research too. Yeah, so what a great part. So that's of it. that's a that's something I'm considering. Definitely it's something with literacy, preferably mm -hmm. K to two or yes. K to three. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, I started blogging. My first blog was about why administrators should building leaders should right. embrace the science right, of reading. reading. Yes. and then you've embraced the science of reading. Now what? Right. And yes. so yes. I've had a, I've actually had a couple of administrators reach out to me uh -huh. and say I brought this up. Yes. I've received some pushback, yes. like you might. Yes. Who are your early adopters? Who are your change agents that yes. you know will embrace this and Go say, you know goers. what? Uh -huh. And then some. So you have this bell curve of change. You have your early adopters. You have yes. your early majority. You have your late majority, and you have your late adopters. Yes. Your early majority will be influenced by your early adopters. Yes. Yeah. So get your early adopters to show the benefits mm -hmm. of this. Go with the goers, right? And then everything else will fall yeah, into place. Yeah, because these early adopters, what they uh, see is success with their kids. Yeah. And, um, you know, all teachers want their kids to succeed. So Absolutely. So when these teachers say, well, look at so-and-so and how well they're doing, like, oh, how did you do that? Yeah. Uh, one thing I do want to ask you, because I'm a big proponent of this, so I don't know if you're doing this in your school or not, but um, I do a lot of work in PLCs uh, mm -hmm. uh, where, um, you know, I'm working with schools over a long period of time. And so that you have, like, job embedded long term professional development and so one mm -hmm. thing um, that I found really really helpful is teachers seeing each other's teach yeah so um, I don't know if that's happening at McDonald but I'll tell you teachers want to see each other's teach mm -hmm. um, so um, you know you oftentimes have these experts your early adopters who are doing some great things and so no need to run somewhere else you can yeah. just go down the, hall. down the hall so I don't know if that's happening there but I will tell you that's one thing in all my years of uh, you know consulting that I've really seen make a big difference when you yeah uh, one day 
workshops are great for acquisition and kind of getting the message out there, but actually changing practice in classrooms is mm -hmm. really difficult. Yep. Um, and so long-term kind of professional development, like you're talking about with AIM, but also opportunities for each other to see each other's practice. Uh, teaching yep. to me, is, uh, as I can remember, was one of the most isolating professions. I pretty much went in my classroom and I sure. taught and I was in there doing, you know, hopefully, and I thought I was doing a great job. Um, but I didn't have anything to measure my, of course I had assessments to measure, but I didn't have a colleague to kind of see, like maybe my colleague across the hall was doing something so much better than mm -hmm. me, but I didn't know about it. And uh, when I became a reading specialist, I'm out in all these different classrooms, and then I was like, oh my gosh, you know, that colleague was like killing it mm -hmm. in this particular instructional practice, and if only I'd known, sure. I could have really um, amplified my practice and built this community. So we so. don't have a level of that yet. Mm -hmm. we, we have reading specialists who might, who do coach, go, coach and provide some modeling in terms of foundations and Hegarty. And I do have some, uh, some teachers who would be definitely what, how you're explaining yes. it in yeah. terms of wow, they're, the way that they're doing X, I right. wanna go see that. So right. that's up to building leadership, yes. you know, Mike and myself yes, being and able to facilitate that. Uh, building leadership has removed those barriers so that yes. teachers can go see yep. that. So just last week I was asked to present, um, state leads were asked to present to the, our whole staff, kind of give an update. And I just kind of did a, a count of how many views uh, of lessons people have watched on the Patton YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. It was 78,920. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, it's telling you that teachers want to see other sure. teachers. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, building that trust and rapport so that teachers feel comfortable. Yes. Yep. Um, you know, it's always key. Um, <laughs> seeing each other's practice because I think it's even more um, challenging and maybe, you know, nerve wracking to have your peer watch you mm -hmm. than um, maybe even somebody from the outside. Yep. Um, but it, just as you said, when you're building these trusting relationships, people, those walls break down. Yep, barriers and then, come down. Um, mm -hmm. You know, then all of a sudden I'm in there with a film crew and one of the <laughs> first grade teachers from um, Blue Mountain has over 10,000 views. Mm -hmm. So did she think when <laughs> I was in there she was going to have 10,000 views? Probably not. But um, think how much other first grade teachers have learned from her, from mm -hmm. her willingness to share her practice. So yeah. um, that's just one thing I would share too that I've learned on my own journey. Yep. So and we've leveraged. There's so much content online. Yes. Free content. Yes. You know. So any building leader who really wants to embrace this and and go move forward with the signs of reading, one of my next blogs will be okay. You don't have money, right? You have, but you not do? everything's about. You have to pay for it. There's a lot of free content. There's Core tons. Learn. Yes. I, I must have seen the those webinars two. and Core Learn. The Kill reading Patrick league. webinars. Yes. Multiple times. The Reading League YouTube yes. channel. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Patton hundreds. YouTube channel. <laughs> Patton YouTube channel. Yes, uh -huh. um, the stuff with uh, Louisa Motes that's coming yes, out. She just uh, launched a new webinar. Yes. There, There's just so much a, free stuff. It's not a secret mm -hmm. anymore. Um, you, you'd be hard pressed not to find it. Yeah. But I do agree with you. I think that Emily Hanford has truly been the catalyst yeah um, she so many administrators have contacted me and said I listened to or mm -hmm. heard about Emily Hanford and here's what's happening in my school district can yeah. you can you help yeah so we owe her a great debt mm -hmm. of yeah, we gratitude do. and I'm just so excited with where we're going mm -hmm. in our direction at McDonald in the Centennial School District so that in a few years I'm hopeful you'll be coming out well we're already coming out well, <laughs> but yes, yes other uh, people will be coming out yes. and seeing what progress we've made right yeah, and I think talking to the teachers and talk about their own yeah. journey. And you yeah. are, uh, you and your team are presenting at the Patent Literacy Symposium yes. in June. Yes, June. Really excited so, about that. Yes. Yep. Um, so I guess to close it up, is there anything I didn't ask you that I should have? And uh, what would be your closing advice to uh, principals mm -hmm. to, to kind of take that next step, to take that leap? Yeah. Well, any for the building leaders, my advice is to remain open-minded. Mm -hmm. Research it. Don't be a victim of the moment. Mm -hmm. I didn't come in right after reading Emily Hansford's article and say, we need to start change. <laughs> you dug in, yeah. Because that, that's always something that turns a lot of people off in terms right. of you uh, read yeah, like something the and of the it's month. like yes. the next week yes. we're doing something. You really need to understand. And you do. Yeah, you uh, need to have a solid knowledge in terms of the science of reading and, and so that, because they're going to ask you a bunch of questions. Mm -hmm. And if you're yes. going to pass it off, it just, it sounds a you're lot better when learner. you're coming. Exactly, yes, you are you're the, the lead learner. learner. You are the lead you're learner. the instructional leader. Yes, right. So we yeah. have to do that, mm -hmm. and and I, you have to embrace that. Yes, because and you that's what we did. signed up for. Uh, you dug in. I mean, I post a lot on Twitter too mm -hmm. and uh, Facebook, but I'm, you always ask 
the best questions. Oh, thank you, I appreciate uh, that. And they show how much you know and how invested you are. And, and that's I'm another, so impressed with that. That's another piece people of advice. Don't, you know, ask uh, questions. You ask questions around phone, uh, phonemic awareness. Uh, mm -hmm. Tweet a, a few weeks ago, I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. and of course, you know, I'm sure other people knew that, but no principal. I, I've never had a principal you know, hopefully I'll meet more, but that has the level of understanding that you do. It's mm -hmm. fine grained. It's not, it's, I'm sure it's yeah. global too, but it really is, you know, the nitty gritty. And so thank you for that. I appreciate you, you, for that. you noticing. And I had to give a lot of thanks to the people I've connected with nationwide, really, because yes, people are generous. Are they not? Very generous very at the generous. time mm -hmm. and re responding to my questions. Yes. And, but the leaders have to do that. You have yes. to embrace that. Mm -hmm. I know it gets busy. We have students, we have teachers. We answer to parents. <laughs> Building you know, things, safety. We have our, our supervisors we have to right. address and answer to. But we have to take the time to build our knowledge base up and then start the change process mm -hmm. and continue to ask questions, seek advice. There's no shame in that. Right. No Especially shame, no literacy. blame. Absolutely. Um, of course, mathematics, I, I'm not trying to dis diminish that. But what can a child do in this day and age if they, they're not literate? And that's kind of my pitch to the teachers, and mm -hmm. they agree. Right. You get to a math test, if you can't read, you're already eliminating right, how much of Right, so much, much of the math test is reading. Yeah. Yes. And so that's why I believe this will have systemic change you're, you're, in our school and our district. You're changing a lot, really, truly changing yeah. 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 OK, so one piece of advice, one next step for a principal. Right now, if you haven't started reading about the science of reading, <laughs> my, my piece of advice would be to start reading Emily Hanford's work. Okay. Great yeah, first step. I agree. And then from there, start identifying your change agents and perhaps give them that level of uh, literature and mm -hmm. discuss what can we, and analyze what are you doing right, right now, right. Where specifically are we? K to two, if not K to three, right. and what can you change? Because there are things you can change now right. that will not cost you anything right. that will have really big impacts. I'm thinking of high frequency words, How the you way teach you teach them. that. Yes. Um, uh, uh, going from word identification to word recognition, recognition. a lot what? of stuff out Oral there you can language. do that. Oral language. Right. So All free. Start with the simple view of reading. That's where right. I started. For mm -hmm. me, That's that was my biggest like understanding. It says it's simple. There's, it's a little bit more complex than yes. that, but that's the first place that's to understand. That's point. Yeah. yeah for yeah. me, that's where I would go in Scarborough's reading rope, which really aligns with the simple view of reading. It does. And every time we do a training at Patton, we always have the simple view of reading, and we yeah. always have Scarborough's reading rope because they anchor us. And I always say those theoretical uh, models are, you know, making complex things. They're a way to access them, yeah. but um, they're not um, static. They're dynamic. Yeah. You know, they're not to be on a wall and be like, oh, there's Scarborough's Rope. Mm -hmm. No, Scarborough's Rope comes out at the data team meeting. It comes out when we're talking about buying curriculum. It comes out when we're yep. talking about buying materials. It comes out when we're talking about instruction, all of that. They're like living, mm -hmm. breathing. So, and I know you're doing that. Yep. So, thank you for this. Thank interview. you. It's my I pleasure. really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay. Sorry for this cold, um, but this is Dr. Pam Kastner uh, saying thank you to John Ragsdale, our producer, and again to Ernesto Ortiz. Please make sure you follow him on Facebook and on on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure he would love to talk to you more about how you can also be an instructional leader for literacy. Uh, this is Dr. Pam Kastner saying goodbye and thank you very much for watching.